Hello all, welcome back to my YouTube channel All About VLSE. In this video, we are going to start with a discussion of system verlog data types. So let us see what are these data types and what are all the data types we have in system verlog. So let us start with the concept of this particular data types. So in this data types, first we will see about our logic data type. So before uh, going to start about this particular logic data type, basically in system verlog, the data types are classified into two types. The data types here, there are these are classified into two types. One is four state data type and another is two state data type. One is four state data type and another is two state data type. So in four state data types, the name itself indicates there are four states. One is zero and another is one followed by X and Z. So in the case of four state data type, we have four states that is zero, one, X and Z. Whereas in the case of two state data types, we have only two states that is zero and one. So in system verlog, we have these two type of data types. One is four state data type and another is two state data type. Whereas in case of Verilog, we have only four state uh, data types. Okay. So let us uh, discuss about this first data type, which is nothing but our logic. Okay. So the logic, it is a four state data type. The logic is a four state. That is, it can have the values of zero, one, X and Z. So this logic is a four state data type, which have four values, zero, one, X and Z. So this four state data type, uh, the keyword for using this particular uh, logic is logic, which is a data type. This is a data type or it is a keyword or you can say it as a keyword. Now, for example, uh, if in a module, if we want to use this particular logic da uh, data type, you can simply write it as in a small letters logic. Okay. Now, let us try to understand the importance of this logic with the help of your EDA playground. Now, let us try to understand this logic data type with the help of this uh, EDA playground. So, let us try to understand this logic data type. So before that, uh, let me take a simple module, which is a test. Okay, let's say the module name is test. And if I declare any variable as reg data type, and if I declare any variable with y data type or net data type, okay. So if I use my always block, always uh, at the rate star begin here, if I try to use my y data type and, and, and assign some value, and if I use uh, my continuous assignment block, which is assign block, and if I use my reg data type, okay, and if I end this module and if I save this and run this, let's see what is what we are getting. So basically, we cannot use your wire data type or net data type uh, inside your always block and you cannot use reg data type inside your, uh, inside your uh, assign block with your assign block, okay. So many, uh, many people who are very beginners to this particular very log language will get confused with this type of uh, conventions rules. Okay, so they will be majorly uh, confused with uh, whether we should we can use this rich data type within an always block or whether we can use this within an assign block or this type of con confusions. Uh, many people who are in beginner stage will get confused. So to avoid this particular confusion, there is one more data type which is known as logic. Okay, so this particular logic this logic data type can be used both in procedural that is you can use this particular logic data type inside a procedural statement like always block and you can also use this particular logic uh, variable inside your uh, continuous assignment block for example let me remove this everything and let's say if i try to write always at the rate uh, star begin so if I write C is equal to zero and end this, and I can also write assign D is equal to one. Okay. So C is of logic data type and D is also of logic data type. And let me save this and run this. Everything is working fine. There is no. So from this, what we can conclude is this logic data type, logic data type can be used in So this logic data type can be used in procedural blocks as well as continuous assignment blocks. There is no restriction of using this particular logic. And coming to the default value of this logic, 
the default value of logic data type is x unknown the default value of this logic data type is unknown it is same as your rich data type which you have studied in your very log logic data type is also same as your uh, rich data type but the major difference is this logic data type can be used in procedural blocks as well as uh, continuous assignment blocks whereas the logic data type the default value is also unknown don't okay yes so this is about logic data type now let us discuss about uh, some two state data types so in two state data types we have different uh, data types like we have bit data type and we have byte data type and uh, we have short int we have int so in two state data types we have bit byte short int int and long so basically this bit is of uh, already we know it is a two state data type and it is of only width one bit okay it is of width one bit and coming to byte and this bit is unsigned this bit is unsigned it is a unsigned data type. and coming to this byte it is also a two state data type and the width here it is eight bits the width here is eight bits and it is signed data type this is a signed data type okay and coming to short int it is of 16 bits width and it is also a signed data type the signed data type which means it can store both positive as well as negative values whereas bit means it is an unsigned which can only store positive values and coming to int it is 32 bits and it is also a signed data type and long int it is of 64 bits and it is also a signed data type so this is about your bit byte short int int and long int so bit can only store uh, one bit it is a of either zero or one and it is unsigned it is a scalar type and the byte is a eight bit signed integer so let us try to declare this in our playground so let me take a module and let me declare a variable with bit data type and uh, and within an initial block what i'm going to do is uh, i'm going to assign a is equal to one tick binary one and just i'm going to display dollar display the value of uh, a is uh, percentage uh, b comma uh, a okay and let me end this and end module let me save this simple a is equal to one okay now let us try to uh, store a unknown value into this particular bit data type and let us see what is happening so that particular unknown value will be converted into zero so here the uh, catch is if you are trying to store any unknown or if you are trying to store any high impedance value into a two state data type that will be converted into zero and it will be displayed okay that is the main difference and if you try to store any negative value here like let's say minus one so the value of a that is going to be printed is one so basically what is happening is uh, you are not specifying any base of this particular number so that is going to be converted into uh, so what is basically happening is if you are trying to store a is equal to minus one so you're not specifying any base here okay so this will be considered as a decimal number with the size 32 okay all 31 zeros followed by one okay and this and this uh, will be converted into two's complement form and that is nothing but uh, this will be converted into two's complement form that means it is equal to one followed by all number of ones so only the LSB will be stored inside this particular bit. Okay, that is what it is happening. So if you see, if you want to see the rest of the values also, two down to zero, if you see two down to zero uh, A, the, and if we want to display this, so you will get three ones. So we are basically getting three number of ones. So this is how your bit data type is going to work. Now let us declare one more data type, which is byte okay byte b and uh, let's try to store some value b is equal to 7 okay and let us display the value of uh, b in decimal format we will display so the value of b which we are getting is 7 but uh, let's see let's try to store minus 7 and let us try again now also you are getting minus 7 because it is a signed data type this is a signed data type so that's why we are getting a negative value as it is okay now 
so let's see if you have declared bit 7 down to uh, if you have declared bit 7 down to 0 a and byte b so what do you think are these are same these are not same so by seeing the size you can see these are these two are same but actually these are not same you might uh, assume this two are same by seeing the size but these two are not same because this byte is a signed data type and this bit this you have written is an unsigned data type this is the major difference between the bit and byte and uh, remaining are, are all same yes so that was about your two state data types next coming to user defined data types so what are this user defined data types user defined data types so basically uh, we are going to use a keyword which is known as type def for defining our user defined data type for example uh, if you have written type def reg a that means this a will become a data type okay this a will now behave as a reg data type so if you write after that a b so this b is a variable this b is a variable of which data type a a is nothing but which is similar to this rest data type this is how we are going to create our own data type for example uh, one more example if we consider if we write a type def bit 7 down to or 31 down to 0 word so this word now becomes a data type this word is now a data type and if you write word of b now this b is a variable and this word is a data type now of which type it is of bit 31 down to 0 this is how we are going to create our own data type now let us try to use this particular type def keyword type def uh, bit a okay type def bit uh, uh, user underscore bit okay so this user underscore bit is now a data type and we will give it to one more data type which is known as m okay and we can store any data m is equal to uh, one tick binary one or one tick binary zero like this we can store and we can display let me save this and let me run this m is equal to one but if you try to store the value here it, it will not store because it is a data type it's not a variable user underscore bit is now became a data type it's not a variable see so unexpected token equal to now it's a data type it's not a variable now let's say if we want to declare a vector here okay uh, if we want to declare a vector the syntax here the normal syntax when you are declaring a vector is byte uh, the normal syntax when you are declaring a vector is this one bit 7 down to 0 a but the syntax while declaring the vector here is different with the type def it is different so you should write type def followed by bit followed by 7 down to 0 user underscore bit so now this is your syntax for declaring a vector type def bit 7 down to 0 and user underscore bit is a data type and instead of writing so this is equivalent to bit 7 down to 0 m so instead of writing bit 7 down to 0 what you are basically writing you are writing user underscore bit so instead of writing bit 7 down to 0 what you are writing basically you are writing uh, user underscore bit that's it so here you can write like this and but if you want to use an array you cannot uh, declare an array with a type diff okay so you can what you can do is you can simply you can simply write user underscore bit m of 3 you can also mention the array dimension on the right hand side but on the left hand side you can if you want to declare a vector so instead of writing bit 7 down to 0 you can simply write user underscore bit okay so this is how you can use so let me take it as n and uh, let me store here uh, uh, one tick binary one and let me save this and let me run this so we will get triple zero one as our answer so let me declare it in disk uh, in binary so we will get zero 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 
one. Okay, m is of eight bit rate, so we'll get six, uh, seven zeros followed by one one. Okay, and if we are trying to store any value inside this n, so n is equal to zero, we cannot directly assign the values inside our array. We should always use indexing if we want to try uh, to store any value inside this array. See, so that's why what I will do n of uh, zero is equal to zero. Okay. That is, I am providing the index now because it is an array and each index is of uh, and each location consists of how many locations? Eight locations. Okay. So, yeah. So, that is how you should use this particular type diff. So, that's all about this particular video. So, in this video, we have discussed about we have started the introduction of your logic data type and we have seen about your two state data types like bit, byte, uh, uh, short int, int, long int, and we have also seen your type diff keyword. And in our upcoming sessions, we are going to discuss about structured data type, type conversions, enumerated data type, and so on. So if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, All About VLSA. Thank you.